Well, it's a story many Canadians will either relate to or learn from. Danny Asaf grew up in Edmonton, and he's written a book about his experience as a fourth-generation Muslim Canadian. The title of the book, Say Please and Thank You and Stand in Line, One Man's Story of What Makes Canada Special and How to Keep It That Way. So, Danny, I guess to start, what does make Canada special? <laughs> Well, you know, Canada still remains a really special place, but there are things that aren't perfect. And one of the things that isn't perfect right now is the way we're divide, dividing and, and, and slicing and dicing how we see one another. And we're trying to see one another as an, maybe sometimes an enemy rather than the ally we really are. And it's a function of the times in some way too. We've got this horrible pandemic. We've got, you know, lots of economic pressures and we've got the, the wake still of 9-11 for the Muslim community and what the horror that 9-11 was, but the paint, the brush that it painted on all Muslims. So, you know, you live in an age sometimes where these stresses are testing who you are. So this is where what makes Canada special really has to shine to get us through this period to get to that brighter future we're all looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And bringing up your, your family history of, of settling here on the prairies, I mean, I'm from Laclobish, so I've, I'm used to having a big mosque in your community, uh, but that's not something everyone on the prairies would see. Talk to me a little bit about your family's yeah. history and founding the first mosque in North America, the yeah. Al-Rashid. So I'll tell you, that's one of the things that wanted me and really motivated to write this book was to tell a little bit about that Alberta history that people don't know. Maybe people in Alberta don't even realize. Uh, and like you said, Carly, uh, whether it's Lac La Biche or Fort Mac or Slave Lake, Alberta, where my family had a business too, there's a mosque and a church. I don't know whether people uh, realize that. And that tradition goes back to early 1900s when my great grandfather came in the 20s and was part of an amazing community that built the first mosque in Canada in Edmonton in 1938 next to the Royal Alec Hospital. And that was a project that brought together everyone in the community, Christians, Jews, everyone came together to help these people build this mosque and to make sure they're the fabric and they were part of the fabric of Alberta. That's the Alberta that I grew up in, I knew. And yeah, after that, my great uncle uh, went to Lac La Biche and became uh, an award-winning uh, mink uh, rancher and furrier. And his name was uh, Uncle Jimmy Terabane and his family and my cousin still lived there. And they're beautiful people, and they genuinely were part of those early pioneers in Lac La Biche to build Lac La Biche into the great community that it still is. So and that's the history of Alberta. And they still play a big part in the community. Um, but as you touch on in the book, there was a big change for many Muslim Canadians post 9 11. Talk to me a little bit about your experience then. So it's almost surreal to think that with my family's history and the way Alberta embraced everybody in this past could be questioned at any point in time. So for me, it was surreal that there's this explosion, this horror, this tragedy that kills all these innocent people in New York City and that it translates into pitting neighbor against neighbor like my parents faced and the neighbor putting up a sign saying, you know, Osama bin Laden lives closer than you think. And then more broadly, people questioning whether Muslim Canadians are the other. I mean, it took me a long time to appreciate this could be happening and it could be happening to me and my family. And then it reminded me that we are all vulnerable. In a moment, anybody can, can portray anybody else as the other. There's something about us all that somewhere, somehow somebody could say, you're different. And once that's okay to do against one group, it means that taboo is broken and it could be okay to do to any group. And ultimately that's what destroys our society. That's what divides us. And that's what can take away what is so special about Canada. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing now that 20 years later that that hate hasn't stopped. There's been this uh, horrific rise in reported hate crimes here in Edmonton against Muslim women and Muslim men. What's your reaction to seeing all of this? still happening. It's, it's shocking to me because that's not the Alberta that I knew. It's not the Alberta that I grew up in. It's so foreign still to me to see that. 
and I live in I live in Toronto now. And people say to me, you know, what was it like growing up in Alberta? What was it like in Edmonton? You know, they always try to joke like, how cold was it? And I tell them, I grew up in like heaven. It was the funnest childhood anyone could ever imagine. We played hockey. We were part of the community. We never thought of ourselves as anything but proud Albertans. And it is a place of great opportunity. And then yet, I see these things. It's almost like we've gone backwards in some way. But at the end of the day, what I know is this. That's not Alberta. And that is not Canada. And these small, loud voices are not entitled to define us. Just because you scream something doesn't make it right or real. And I think that's where we all have a job to resist and protect and preserve the Alberta we all love and we know is the place for everyone. You work hard, you give back your Albertan, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Whether that's Edmonton, Lac La Biche, or Fort McMurray, or Calgary, that is the Alberta that we know. Mm -hmm, definitely. And now the timing of your book coming out during this global pandemic, but also in the middle of Ramadan. Tell me a bit about the significance of this timing. Well, the significance of this timing is that, you know, Ramadan is a time of reflection. So it's a time when Muslims fast from sun up to sundown. And of course, fasting itself, every, almost every culture or religion has fasting as part of its tradition. So it's, again, even though it's the month of Ramadan, it's a tradition we, most people share. I mean, even in California, they're having like diets now to get healthy. So we all fast. But it's also a time when you reflect on what you have and be grateful for what you have. And it is a time where we reflect on what is great about Canada. And it makes it even more important to emphasize those things. So that's why it's really special for me that this book comes out in Ramadan because after this month of reflection and being able to share the experience of Ramadan with others and what it means to really use it as an opportunity to tell the story of Canada and to tell the story of Canada through a lens that people didn't appreciate or see that is also a part of our Canadian and Alberta history. And that's why it's important for me that this book came out during the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Now, the book comes out on Monday, the May 10th. You have the ear of Canadians. What's that one message you want them to hear? Is that we are all allies and not enemies. That there is no them, there's only us. And that Canada is poised to have its greatest generation and future yet. Because the world is ready to reward us for all the work and all our history of embracing many to become one. And the chance for us to take advantage of the way the world is connected and technology is in all our hands to make sure the future is as prosperous and bright as it's ever been is really at our fingertips. And it would be a shame for us to turn our back on our own traditions and that opportunity and lose it for ourselves and most importantly for our kids. Well, I'm looking forward to, to reading the book when it comes out on Monday. Is there anything else that you'd want to add? Carly, what I would want to add is that this place, uh, Canada, is very special. And it's never perfect. And in every age, we find those challenges. And it's up to all of us. We have an obligation. Whatever small things we touch every single day to try to make them better. And to make them better for ourselves and others. And that teamwork will make Canada as great as it's ever been. And we're looking forward to the best generation yet. And it's up to us and we all play a role in it. Perfect, thank you so much for joining us today. Wonderful.